pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Alderman Edwards. Here. Alderman Simpson. Here. Alderman Turner. Here. Alderman Lesko. Here. Alderman Canman. Here. Alderman Joe. Here. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderman Tylen. Here. Alderman Dove. Here. Alderman Griffin. Here. Approval of the September 10th, 2013 committee meetings. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Ordinance table are remaining in committee. 2011 2012-123, 2012-126, 2012-376, 2013-128, 2013-174, 2013-193, 2013-250, 2013-260, 2013-264, 2013-266, 2013 Madam uh, Chair? Yes. Uh, with regard to that last ordinance you just uh, listed, 2013-357, Mr. Dan Long is here tonight, so you I'd like to pull that out? Uh, pull it out. Madam Chair. You want to pull it and put it on the consent agenda? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, 264, I think we voted on that last week. Didn't we? Yeah. It was, it was uh, the amended agenda was taken out. So okay. this is, okay. you might have another agenda there. But it, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been taken out already. Any other uh, items that need to come out or, or what's your pleasure? Hearing none, ordinance for committee consideration. 2013-360 is an ordinance amending Chapter 90, Sections 90.15.2 and 90.24 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to terms and renewal of licenses. Is there a motion? Um, um, Madam Clerk, yes. if we're doing these in sequence, can we do 357 first? Which is... Uh, My apologies. 2013-357 is an ordinance approving the reappointment of Dan R. Long to the Springfield Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Is there a motion? It's been moved to consent. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. The Springfield Housing Authority is an extraordinarily important body of local government in Springfield, probably the largest uh, landlord. And they uh, have 1,000 units and uh, approximately 2,000 uh, Section 8 uh, vouchered units <laughs> and Dan Long is here tonight fortunately and um, he um, is has been prepared to answer a question that I'd like to pose to him. The, the question relates to a Wall Street Journal article that was uh, published on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, Journal on May 7 of 2013 and it'll take just 30 seconds to, to read uh, the, the caption for the headline was eight housing agencies push to impose time limits work requirements quote, deep in the president's new budget is a plan that could transform public housing in the nation by allowing housing authorities to increasingly set time limits or work requirements for participants. Currently, government housing benefits are generally open-ended. People endure long waits to qualify for the program. But the president's fiscal year 2014 budget calls for substantial expansion of a 1996 demonstration project that allows select housing authorities to set restrictions on residents or try other strategies to promote self-sufficiency. Currently, only 39 of the almost uh, of the over 3,000 nationally uh, approved housing authorities have uh, moved into that um, uh, test uh, uh, demonstration project. Housing authorities are lobbying for the expansion. They say the current system doesn't motivate residents to become financially independent and it isn't fair to thousands of impoverished renters who need to um, get the help of assistance. The, uh, any, uh, most of the agencies that have adopted this type of approach exempt seniors and disabled persons from any type of uh, time limits or uh, work requirements. So Dan, my question is, what's your opinion of this type of approach for the Springfield Housing Authority? Well, well, thank you for the question. Let me just begin by first thanking the mayor for uh, recommending this appointment and respectfully request the concurrence of the uh, city council. I've served on the uh, 
Housing Authority Board now for, uh, for eight years. As Alderman McMinniman indicated, we are the largest landlord. We do have over 2,000 Section 8 vouchers, serve 3,000 families, pay out $9 million to landlords, and have a, just about 3,100 people on the Section 8 waiting list, which right now takes about six months to a year, which gets, gets to your question. I think some of the largest cities in the article talked about New York, where some families are, are in public housing for 20 years. Um, we don't have the same type of problem here in Springfield because we're fortunate that we have a, a fair number of Section 8 vouchers where some communities only have a few hundred and are even giving them up. But, but I think uh, certainly any, any uh, change in public policy of that magnitude would have to be approved by the Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development. And, and should they approve that, I'm sure as a member of the Housing Authority Board, it's something that I'd certainly would be willing to, to look at and examine along with the other board members and, and the staff. Um, in terms of implementing some type of change that would limit the vouchers. I think they, uh, uh, they suggested five years in, in that particular article or in some of the, the projects they have going on now throughout the country, they've, they've limited to five years, which is um, uh, something that could be looked at. Right now, in Champaign County, I think, uh, requires individuals to work. And that, again, has gotten approval from the federal government to be able to do that. Requires what? Work. Work requires them to work uh, if they're going to be in public housing. Again, that's a special um, designation that HUD has given Champaign to allow that. The Springfield Housing Authority um, right now requires individuals to do public service. And we keep track of that. It's tracked within the agency. And uh, I think it's 15, 20 hours. Um, a week, I believe, something something in that range. So, but getting back to your question, certainly if that was something that was allowable, I'd be willing to, to explore. Mm, Madam anyone Chair, else? Yes. Yeah, I just have a couple of questions. What? So everybody, you're saying everybody in Springfield public housing has to do 15 to 20 hours of community service work per week? Not, not, not seniors and disabled. Okay. okay, other than them? Yes. And if they don't, and I may be wrong. May I, I believe it's a week. It might be a month. I can't remember exactly. Okay. But, yeah, but if they don't do the, it's documented. It's tracked. Uh, some of them actually come to the SHA offices, do work there. Uh, what happens if they don't do the work? I think they, uh, I, I think they uh, require them to pay uh, additional rent because the Section Eight obviously offsets the rent, and so they would have to pay more towards that towards that rent. Then as to the program that Ms. Alderman McMiniman was talking about, you said it would have to be approved by HUD, but wouldn't the initiation or the, re wouldn't this have to be initiated by the Springfield Housing Authority and request HUD to approve such a program locally? Isn't that how it works? As opposed no, actually the president included it in the 2014 budget he submitted to Congress. It's an expansion of what was started back in, I think, um, 1999 under President Clinton, so this would simply expand it. The 39 states that have it now, each one was individ individually approved by Congress. So it's not something that we could initiate. It's something that would have to come um, from Washington. Okay, but for example, if SHA wanted to do that, you could reach out to our senator, Senator Durbin, or something like that, and it... We could, we could, again. Uh, in the context of the total public housing universe in the country, we're, we're a small player. Well, any, any additional discussion? Thank you. Thank you Mr. very Long. much. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, those, all, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? 2013-360 is an ordinance amending Chapter 90, Sections 90.15.2 and 90.24 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to terms and renewal of licenses. Still Move for in? debate. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to put on the debate agenda. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. I have a question. Alderman Griffin. Madam Chair, uh, the only thing I noticed in here was um, basically we're moving up 10 business days so they would have time to examine it to make sure it's not a problem. Uh, there was some talk about failure to timely uh, pay the annual permit process, et cetera, that there would be a late payment fee. but. I didn't see it listed in there what that fee would be. Is there any way we would know ahead of time what that is that we're Can okay someone with? from the administration answer that? Currently in our code right now, we have a $50 late fee. 
we are looking at, and I, when I say we, the, the Liquor Commission meets on a monthly basis and we were going through the Liquor Code and they were making some recommendations to the Mayor's Liquor Commissioner to present to you to raise that fee from $50 to $100 for a late fee. All McCammon? Yes, was this a proposed, the changes to the Liquor Code, was this run by any of the liquor establishments? See if they have any, if they have any suggestions or no. It was, it was presented to the, the liquor commissioners, the deputy liquor commissioners, and to the mayor as liquor commissioner to make these recommendations because of the problems that we've had in the past. Uh, having a postmark date of December 31st for the liquor licenses, to, the, the payments to be in, and the license expiring on the 31st put us into the following year before we were getting payments on the license, which actually meant the license were expired. So by having 10 working days prior to get the payment in, we would be able to determine on what license on the 31st would be expired without having to go into the following okay. year. So all, all licenses expire on December 31st? The liquor licenses, yes, sir. And under, okay, they start on January 1st generally, but what if uh, somebody gets their first liquor license in the middle of the year, like March. It's prorated for them okay. from that point to December 31st. All the licenses expire December 31st. All the minute which So the, I just, if I could, so the main reason for this or, uh, ordinance was so, was to, for the 10, so that they would have to pay, make the payment 10 days prior to December 31st? So we would know before the following, you know, in the new year, who is renewing the liquor licenses because of the postmark date. <clears throat> okay. All the networks. Yeah, just from a, business perspective now you've got them around Christmas when a lot of activities are going on and things are kind of on held and you're putting them through the holiday period wouldn't it make sense just to change the date like January 15th or January 16th we thought about that but due to the, the calendar you're changing the date changing every year they may throw it onto a weekend or so we well, so with the first but we did, by saying 10 days from the 31st, then you're going to put it. I, I just don't want, the there's a lot of activities going on in restaurants through the holidays. And that's one of them deals where I'll get to it because I got catering going on, I got parties going on, I got this going on. I, I just think it makes it tough. Yeah. Uh, I, and I would, I would say I would be more inclined to move it toward the end of January or whatever to give right. these people a break where it's not so hectic in their business climate to help them out than right. to say, you know what, now we're going to push this into Christmas. It's like, well, actually, really? the billings for all this goes out November 1st. So they know on November 1st. Well, let's we change send it the to November out. 30th. We could do that. But I'm just I mean, saying by putting a postmark date by the December 31st doesn't give us time to act on if they don't renew the license. I know Joe Davis has received complaints about people that have not paid their license and they're still operating on the grounds that their license is well, expired. And I, so. You know what, being not making excuses, I'm not in the liquor business, so I really don't have a dog in this fight other than this. We're having them renewed right during the most business, busiest time of the year when most of them are making 30% of their sales through the December, the Christmas, the holidays and that. I'm not surprised they don't get to you till January. Well, but the license expires on the 31st, though. Uh, Technically, you're not you're not hearing what I'm saying. Let's make yeah. your check January one, and then not pay you till the 15th, and let's see if you like it. My point being is, it's busy for restaurants and bars during that time period. All right. It's all hands on deck. So if you've ever tried to get reservations for a party or whatever, you can't get it because they're busy. You need to do it back in October, November to get your party reservations during that time frame. Yeah. I'm just saying, we look at it from our point of view. It'd be nice if we looked at it from their point of view. Well, I have had businesses tell me that they would like that billing, you know, to be on the 1st of November so they could just go ahead and write one check. What we've done in the past is we've done two billings. We've done a November 1st, sent out a renewal notice to them saying that your license is going to be coming due December 31st. We would like to know if you're going to renew it. If you are, pay the $25, renew our intent, and provide us with the documentation, the certificate of insurance, whatever. And then we do another billing on the 1st of December 
which costs extra for postage and everything else. And, and so, let, if I can continue on, Madam Chair, sure. let me let me tell you else what happens in that time period for these guys. You're mm -hmm. asking them to give certificate of insurance. What are you doing if their license, if their insurance only goes to like July 1st? You send out another notice to them, or what are we doing here? The insurance company automatically sends us a notice showing that they have renewed their insurance. If they don't, then they're in violation for not having. Yeah, so the date's kind of irrelevant insurance. here. I, I just look at it at, at, from the business standpoint, trying to help them out. And if you've had business guys come to you already, which you just admitted they did, and said, "Hey, why don't we just pay it on the first of November?" Right. It appears to me that's what they'd like to do too. Right. Chairman. Yes. It, well, first of all, as to Alderman Edwards' point, uh, December 31st is just an arbitrary date. We could pick January 31st and say the I licenses expire on January 31st. Yes. That's that's a pr key. Pardon me? It's consistent with the rest of the license they apply for. Oh, the other business, the tobacco licenses and all that all do at the same time. Madam Chairman. I, but yes. uh, also, um, you said that this, by say, stating 10 days prior to December 31st, that would not be a weekend. Well, 10 days before December 31st could fall on a weekend. It just depends on it the It says work, 10 working days. Oh, 10 working days. Yes. Okay. Yeah, All it right. says Madam 10 Clerk, working days. Yes. Um, my office works hand in hand with Mr. Oliver to get all of those liquor license applications and renewals out the door by November the 1st. We can certainly include language that would suggest these liquor license applicants can certainly pay their entire bill in full by the end of November or December, whatever the case may be. I mean, that certainly has always been an option, I think, for right. the liquor license holders. Or, or a 10-day grace period after January the 1st. I mean, I just, I just look at this, and we come in and say, by God, you're going to play by our rules, and here's what we do. Well, you know what? We're business guys. We're busy. It's not just your liquor license. It's everybody else. It's the state. It's the county. It's you. Somewhere along the line, we got to turn to be a little bit more friendly and say, your license is due on January 1st, but we'll give you a 10-day grace period, you no later than January. Pick a date. I don't care, 15th. It, it just appears to me we, we try to ride everybody, and it's sales tax that are generated for our community. They're out there doing it for us, and I just think we ought to be helping them. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. 2013-361 is an ordinance authorizing payment to Gary Britz, an Office of Public Works employee, to settle a workers' compensation claim for case number 13WC24239. Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and uh, second for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-362 is an ordinance authorizing execution of a settlement agreement and general release regarding Illinois Department of Human Rights Commission case ALS 09718, charge number 2009-SF87 and EEOC number BA82496, Robert Horton versus the City of Springfield Office of Public Works. Is there a motion? I'll move to debate. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the debate agenda. Is there any discussion? Yes, uh, I have some questions about this case, and I don't know if Corporation Council would advise that we discuss it in open discuss it in open session executive or session. And executive we are session. prepared to uh, answer any questions we have. Well, I would move then that we postpone this to the end of our agenda, and then have an executive session on it at that time. Um. Since it's on the debate agenda and it won't be addressed until next week, can we go into executive session then and just discuss, discuss it? Well, I think it would be better to go to executive session today because in case there's some questions that need to, to be answered in the interim, then the staff would have time to get the answers. Does anyone object to going into executive session at the end of this meeting? That's a consensus? Okay, we'll do that. Do you want to? Will you go? be able to? I'll go get the equipment. Okay. Did we do a, vo a vote yet on? No, we didn't vote. Debate? It's on. We... All those in favor? Of debate? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013 363 is an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement to extend the cable television franchise agreement 
through June 30th, 2014 with Comcast of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, LLC. Is there a motion? Good for consent. Second. second. It's been moved and second for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? I have a question. Uh, uh, just why is this, why are we just renewing this for, you know, such a short period, less, less than a year? What? We are doing that because Azavar is still in discussions with Comcast over the audit that Azavar has been doing on behalf of the city. That hasn't come to a final resolution yet, and because it hasn't come to a final resolution, it would be best to just extend the current agreement until we have all of that worked out. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, uh, yes. Mr. McCarty, regarding that audit, could you give us the range of amounts that may be in dispute with Comcast, Comcast as far as additional franchise fees they may owe the city of Springfield? I can't do that tonight, Alderman, simply because uh, there is an agreement between Asvar and Comcast not to disclose anything until this thing is resolved. Uh, I think I can probably talk to you in private about that with some estimates. I will tell you just uh, for some context that Azavar was successful in discovering an overpayment of a utility gas tax or a gas use tax for CWLP. The result of that was a initial upfront credit of $43,000 for the utility and ongoing projected savings of $1,500 a month for the utility. So they did have some success. Uh, they do expect more success with Comcast. I just can't get into numbers. I apologize for that, but we'd be happy to talk to you in private about that. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. 2013-364 is an ordinance authorizing a memorandum of understanding agreement with the Illinois Fire Service Institute regarding state use of Homeland Security grant number EMW 2013-2013. SS 14 S01 funding on behalf of the city of Springfield, Illinois. Is there a motion? Motion for consent. Second. second. It's been moved and second for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Just a question for the chief. Is, uh, it, uh, chief, how much money are we uh, talking about in this grant? It varies. Uh, it's very dependent upon how many classes the University of Illinois offers to our firefighters. And it also depends on how many that we can schedule to get over there. So it's a, it, it's kind of a moving target, sir. So this this is just for to provide uh, a class where the Ellen, the um, Illinois Fire Service Institute uh, provides classes to our firefighters, and then they're paid. The Illinois uh, Fire Service Institute is paid out of this grant. Is that this MOU there? allows the IFSI to bill? the Illinois Terrorism Task Force on our behalf, and then we receive that reimbursement. We get the money for what, uh, the, the training, or the training is provided by the Illinois Fire Service Institute, right? That's correct, and so we are reimbursed for tuition, overtime, and any oh. backfill costs. Oh, we pay it initially, and then we get reimbursed. Yes, I, I see. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-365 is an ordinance accepting proposal number RFP FM 1403 with Asset Works Incorporated for a web-based fleet management information system in an amount not to exceed $185,670. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Question. Uh, oh. Yes. Alderman Thylen. Uh, Director McCarty, I believe that this is coming in under what you had uh, initially thought was going to cost. Actually, it's coming in just about where we thought. Uh, collectively, we planned on about 300000 for both the FMIS and the fuel 300s. management, which you'll get to in two ordinances from now. Okay. The 300 is what I was right. sticking in my head, and that's why I saw. Right. So the one later on <coughs> about for the 106. Right. Uh, ordinance 367. So between the two, you're about right on the 300. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Hammond. Uh, Director McCarty, I take it, or would I be correct, that th these are this one and the other ordinance you're referring to, these are for computer systems, and the idea is that we're going to save a lot more money than we're spending on these computer systems? 
Well, that's, yes, of course, at the end of the day. These are software systems that we talked about way back when we uh, came to the council to talk about buying the building and doing the consolidation and all of the things we needed. If the building is the, the body of this consolidation, these software systems are the heart and soul of a modern fleet operation. Uh, right now, there's an awful lot of paper involved in what we do. We have systems that are outdated and more than 20 years old. In one of our shops, we use Excel spreadsheets and QuickBooks to keep track of uh, labor and parts. So this is very, very important for us to have the most efficient shop that we can possibly have. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013366 is an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $2 million from unbudgeted, unappropriated fund balance to be used for drainage and alley maintenance for the Office of Budget and Management. Is there a motion? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? A discussion. Alderman McMenamin. Uh, Corporation Council, will you prepare an amendment for this ordinance for consideration next week that will reduce the spending to one million? And simultaneously, I'm asking that you prepare an ordinance that would uh, devote one million dollars towards our police and fire pension funds. <coughs> In other words. We have to address both our infrastructure and our pension problems. We can't do one to the exclusion of the other. And therefore, the, uh, the purpose of the amendment next week will be to split this $2 million and uh, put $1 million into infrastructure and $1 million to our police and fire pension funds. I'll make that way. I'd like to have uh, Mr. Bottom and Mr. Mahoney respond. What? if you could, about, you know, what this would do to your proposed. Because I think you, is this spreadsheet that we received today in direct relation to this ordinance? That's correct. It's, it's a number of things, but there's about one million roughly of drainage projects. So um, we could reduce it whatever, you know, whatever amount we get in the supplemental, but it will impact what we were able to do, obviously. So there's alley improvements in there. There's drainage projects. Um, so there's, there's some 33 individual projects on the spreadsheet that you provided. On the drainage list, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And that's got a grand total of one, $1.175 million? Yes. But granted, those are estimates, but it's in that ballpark. Yeah. There's I'll also... I'm sorry. Other than Joe's... While, I mean, while the director's up there, I guess my question would be, would he be prepared next week to offer a list that would match Alderman McMiniman's request if it's voted on. Can you, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you've rated these, these projects, correct? The, the, the most needed? Yes, but if you're not going to take one million out, we have about $500,000, I think, to clean up for actually the work that's going on right now with some of the programs. Mm -hmm. There's about a few hundred thousand dollars for the worst alleys repairs that are there in there as well. Mm -hmm. Now, those are estimates. So I guess the easiest way would, if you took a million dollars off, we could take the drainage projects off there. Alden Turner. I, I guess you answered part of my question about how much was in there for the alleys and the other. And so, you, so your thought process would be to take the million from the drainage projects. Is that what I heard you say? Well, these are all projects, obviously, that need to be done. It's just right. a matter. Of, I mean, I guess we have to pull back on them. These projects, these drainage projects, are projects that our engineers have identified as needing improvements. Many of them, we've got several calls from residents in that area as well as well as many of them are calls that I know most of the aldermen are aware of because there are ongoing issues with some of the drainage problems in those areas. There are small, a lot of smaller projects, but they have a very significant impact in a lot of those neighborhoods. And, and that's exactly what I was going to say. A lot of the, I looked at the list and a lot of the uh, projects that are on the list are projects that I've gotten a number of calls and they're actually becoming a safety hazard for those neighborhoods and they really cannot go much longer. Uh, without <coughs> creating a much bigger safety hazard and leading to more deterioration, more, more deterioration that would need to be addressed as well as more funding that would be needed. So it's, it's almost like if we, we can't continue to put it off and then have to end up spending more money down the road. And we, we actually we, we approach OBM regarding the Fund 95, which is the infrastructure <coughs> fund, as we all know, and to know what was available in there. And that's why we decided these are projects that could be done. Um, relatively quickly over the late fall into the winter and would have high value come um, spring next year. Yeah, there, there are a couple of projects on here that when it, when you get the least bit of amount of rain, the roads become 
almost impassable. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the council should look into see whether or not you can take the money out of 95. That's well, that was my next that question. Was, well, question. Well, I know that we've taken money out of that fund before. However, we were told the citizens of Springfield that we would not, that that would be a designated fund for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure and I, a corporation council would have to address the issue whether or not even that's, is it legal for us to even do that? I don't think you could, but uh, without, up the top of my head, without re, you know, researching it uh, at this moment. But also I think uh, before I start filing an amendment of the, uh, I think maybe we ought to find out if the council wants to amend this. Why should I prepare something if you, no one wants to. I would think that's fair, that we would need to take a vote. Alderman Kamen? Uh, well, we did once uh, take some money out of Fund 95 when, under the Dablin administration when uh, he was threatening to lay off about 30 or 40 police officers. But what we did then was we we just borrowed, we put in a language that's saying we were borrowing the money from Fund 95 for that purpose and it would be paid back. And we did pay it back in the previous fiscal year, or the completely paid it back. Uh, under the pre previous fiscal year, thanks to the, uh, the the work of Mayor Houston, and uh, I, uh, but I don't think it's a good practice to, as I think one of the other aldermen said, or I think it was Alderman Simpson or Chairman Simpson, we 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 impose these taxes for the specific purpose of infrastructure, not to spend it on something else. Madam Chair, Alderman but I I did want to add, I did have a que question too. So these, these projects that you emailed us, these are all drainage projects? They're that's correct. Alley. And that's a, a portion of the supplemental. There's a portion for the alleys. There's a portion for these drainage projects. There's about 500000 that deals with some of the ongoing work that we're doing right now. Okay. The so, the so in addition to this, there's alley projects, but you haven't given us <laughs> of the list of those projects. Could you give us the list of the proposed alley projects Yes, as we, well? we have those. It's for going out to bid on overlay for some of the uh, worst alleys. We rank them. One through five, our engineering staff did that over the winter, and our intention is to take care of the one, twos, and threes, go out for a bid on the asphalt. Our crews are actually working on the rock alleys, and we began that work late, just about a week ago and we worked through the late fall and the winter on those. Yeah. But we can give you a list of those, yes. You mean you previously gave us a list of alleys that needed work on? Is that what you're saying, and they were rated? No, we, we, oh. we rated them. We can give you that list. Oh, okay. We actually have a copy, and we'll get some copies. And what is the kind of work that would be do being done in alleys would be what? Well, depending on the alley, but it's grading and resurfacing, and if it's rock, it's grading and then doing rock work. And this drainage uh, uh, work, in addition to alleviating some of the things that Alderman Simpson man mentioned, like the water building up in the streets, would it also alleviate some of the problems that people have with their basements flooding when we get a large, a big rain? Well, it's, it's going to depend area by area, not, not completely, but it's mostly water that sits in. Some of it gets in the basements and it sits in an area on the road. Uh, gets into their yards and it just makes it's it's a health hazard there's a lot of issues that go along with it and some of these areas um, it, it's it's are much longer than it should some of it's going to be ditching it may be some storm sewer connection it just depends on the project Alderman Lesko. i'd like to have an opinion from director mccarty on the transfer of the money or the, the breaking up madam chair could i address that because uh, i'm no, not asking no, for the I, money I to come out of fund 95. Uh, excuse yeah. me and i would like excuse to excuse me yeah. thank you Mr. McCarty, you had your hand up, and I was going to get to you eventually. Thank you. I will have to go back and look at the original ordinance. This is the ordinance that was passed around 2009 or so when you increased the sales tax by a quarter percent and the hotel motel tax by uh, whatever it was for a total of about $5.6 million. That's the revenue we're talking about here. And my understanding is it was to be utilized only for infrastructure. Only for infrastructure. That's yes. All of the infrastructure, all the, the gambling revenue that we've done, the new sales tax that we just did, all of that stipulates specifically that it's infrastructure. I would assume your original ordinance did as well, but I'd have to go back and look at it. Alvin Edwards. Yeah, first of all, a point of order here under Robert's rules. We have a motion on the floor, and we can't take another vote about writing amendments or not writing amendments. And if an alderman wants some amendments written, um, he can talk to corporate counsel, he or she can talk to corporate counsel about that, not while we have a motion on the floor for a vote. And those amendments can come up uh, later for a vote or, or not. But 
right now under Robert Trudel's order, you got a motion on the floor, and we have to deal with that motion before we can vote on anything else. Thank you, Mr. Parliamentarian. <coughs> um, Mr. McMahon. I think this uh, comment is appropriate, uh, the, the motion to put this on the consent agenda, because we're talking about the ordinance in general. If, if I do introduce a, a, you have a good question, uh, Alderman Lesko, about the, the uh, an amendment would be to reduce the spending of uh, out of fund 95 from 2 million down to 1 million but the the million that we had put into the pension funds would not come from fund 95 it would be come from our unappropriate unappropriated fund balance of i believe according to our treasurer last report of roughly 8 million dollars and what that does is it, it it puts that money aside in our pension so it can't be used later in the fiscal year for other purposes and and budgeted in ways that would prevent it from going to our pensions. Any so I, I, I understand your questions, and I, and thank you. All right, Griffin. So how's that tied to this ordinance? I'm giving a rationale for the reduction from $2 million down to $1 million. But this is $2 million that cannot be spent any other way. Right. right. It, it preserves the monies in Fund 95 for a future uh, point in time when the city has more completely addressed the uh, the, the pension obligations. It's kind of holding that money uh, in hostage. in hostage. That's a good way of putting it. Okay. okay. Any yeah. this? So, if I may. Uh, Are you just, going to address specifically this? The yes. $2 million? If, if I may point out, I mean, this ordinance says it's appropriating two million dollars from unappropriated fund balance to of fund 95. Fund. So we're not. This is money that's not in 95 now, but we're going to put it in 95. That's the way I, I read it. Is that correct, Director McCarty? No. Well, then why does the description say requesting a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $2 million from unappropriated fund balance to expenditure accounts? Looks like money has to come in somewhere. Pardon me? That's where the money comes in. It's the source. It's the source of where the money comes in, and then they appropriate the money after it gets here. Is that, isn't that correct, Dr. McCarty? That, that's correct. I thought the money from the, that we raise from these taxes directly goes into Fund 95. It does. It's budgeted. It's just yeah. unappropriated. It's unappropriated money. Well, it, well, it, right, but this is, the source of the money is still coming, Fund 95 source. I don't believe right, that's That's what, just where it goes. Man, uh, it. Yes. I don't believe that's what the fact sheet says. I think you look at the fact sheet, what the fact sheet says is it comes from line item 1204, which if my memory serves me correctly, may be a personnel line item. And you're supplementing that into expenditure. Okay, Mr. McCarty, is it a personnel? Eight, one point eight million dollars. Our major object codes for personnel are the 1100s, 1200s, or the contractual codes. No, well, then it's not 95. No, you're, there's a fund number. And then there's I know what they are, and you just said they're contractual. That's not 95. The fund number is 95. The major object code is 1200. The minor object code is 1204, which is a specific purpose. You budget minor and major object codes for every single fund that we have, so including the, fund 95. So, so what it's saying sheet. is this is fund 95 is the fund from whence it is coming. It is a 1200 eligible expense. So, Mr. McCarty, on the fact sheet it says to expenditure accounts, 095 is the is fund 95. Correct. And then 1204 would be the object minor object code. And then line. 2306 would be the, another minor object code. Correct. Correct. Do you have this? Well, it's, it's broken I down. I don't it's, have it in front of me. It's yeah. broken down. That's right. it's, it's, that's what it's yeah, 1.8 and then 200,000. Between those two op small objects, okay. I don't have, but yes, it's the, no problem. No, 090, the first number is the fund. 095 is the fund. Okay. Uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013 367 is an ordinance accepting proposal number RFP FM 1406 <clears throat> with WJ Scott Company for the installation of Fuelmaster software and Fuelmaster FMS systems in an amount not to exceed $106,258.59 for the Office of Budget and Management. Motion? Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to the Senate agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013 368 is an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation 
in the amount of $553,000 from unbudgeted, unappropriated fund balance to be used for the Northeast TIF Redevelopment Project Fund for the Office of Budget and Management. Is there a motion? Consent. Move to consent. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-369 is an ordinance accepting and authorizing the execution of an agreement with USA Hoist Company Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $279,400 for maintenance services for Dolman Power Plant Complex Stack Elevators for the Electric Division for the Office of Public Utilities. Is there a motion? Good for consent. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Madam, uh, Madam Clerk, I've been asked to hold 2013-370 and 2013-271. Are there any objections to holding that in committee? No ob objection, but is there, uh, was there a rationale given for holding the uh, ordinances? Uh, yes, Alderman. Um, our office is charged with notifying all the taxing authorities, and those notices had not gone out yet. Thank you. 2013-372 is a resolution to provide a letter of support on behalf of Bywater Development Group for its low-income housing tax credit application to the Illinois Housing Development Authority for rehabilitation of the Pine Woods Apartments located at 1665 Seven Pines Road. Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-373 is an ordinance approving the reappointment of Biku Mahinda to the Commission on International Visitors. Is there a motion? Move for consent. consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for this, that this be up, put on the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, is Mr. Mahinda here today? Would you care to uh, acknowledge yourself? Thank you for being here, sir. Biku Mahinda. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Mm -hmm. Um. The chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the city council for the purpose of holding an executive session to discuss pending litigation pursuant to 2C4 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act and personal matters pursuant to 2C5 of the Illinois Open, Open so Meetings moved. Act. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? We are in executive session. 